Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here to give you an update and a look at what went on in K-State's second open practice of fall camp. We are 19 days away from kickoff, less than three weeks. Last week, we got to hear from all the offensive coaches. Today, we got to hear from all the defensive ones. Tomorrow, Joe Klanderman will speak for the first time. And then uh, a little ways down the line, we are going to get to hear from Matt Wells next week. So getting to hear from all the different staff members in the buildup to the season. But today, another look at K-State practicing and some interesting notes there that Drew will get into in just a moment for us. But before we do that, a good time to remind you that join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, an exclusive K-State welcome experience, and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. So another good reminder as uh, you know, we're sitting here, what, 19 days away from K-State kicking off the season. We are 12 days away from the 2024 edition of the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. So if you're not going to be over there this year, which I don't imagine many of you are watching this will be, uh, start getting everything in order right now to make sure you're there next year when the Cats go. And the best place to start is by going to Cats2Ireland.com. All right, Drew, let's just jump into it. Uh, my first question for you today, since I was not at open practice this morning, so what you're telling the listeners, you're, you're telling me, and I'm going to process it the same way, what what were a couple of the standouts to you today? Was it players? Was it personnel? What what was it that stood out to you that you saw uh, that you were fascinated by this morning inside of the Shamrock? Yeah, this, this is a tough question. I, I think that the first thing that really kind of stood out, and, and I, know, I know that you'll you'll enjoy this, is we got to actually see some eleven on eleven today, and kind of got to see what kind of that all of that looks like and kind of how the operation looks and everything was very crisp it looked like it had been it's been a little bit over a week now so k-state is used to kind of how the practices go and the routine was all crisp uh no real surprises in the 11 on 11 uh, that we got to see uh, because if you're gonna look at it how what with what we saw we kind of saw what the first string offense and defense looks like no real surprises offensive line was exactly like uh connor riley laid out uh last week uh defensive end though was uh brendan mott and cody stuffelbean to start uh but you also got to see two reps from every single defensive end that k-state has essentially so it was kind of one of those where okay, those two might start, and they still might start for the UT Martin game, but you're going to see upwards of seven defensive ends play uh, this season. Uh, but uh, from a player standpoint, I think the one that really stood out the most was we really got to see how explosive Dylan Edwards looks, and, and there were a few times where he burst through the hole with lots of explosion, and there wouldn't have been anyone near him if this was a full, a full field and not go 10 yards and then stop. Yeah, it's it's good to kind of hear on some of that. And I'll ask you to expand a little bit more then. What were some of the health notes that you noticed today? Because that was one of the first things last week that was easy to say. There were guys in non-contact jerseys. Uh, we knew DJ Giddens was one of those guys, and we saw he was a little bit more limited in some of the drills that he did than the other players. Uh, Colby McAllister was one of the others that was wearing one of the non-contacts. Uh, what, what were some of the health notices that you had today while you were there? Uh, so there was only two really to note uh, with no contact jerseys, and it was Kendall Thomas still in a no contact jersey, and, and DJ Giddens was, but I, I think that he is closer to a hundred percent than not because it was like the very last thing before they broke out to eleven on eleven, where uh, K-State running backs coach Brian Anderson handed DJ a no contact jersey. So I, I think that that is more of 
just kind of taking the load off of him and not having him absorb as many hits during fall camp, which I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, I guess the other health note is Alec Marenko was practicing today. No, he didn't have any, uh, no contact either. Like he, it seems like he is a full go. That's that's good news there because Marenko is one of those guys we talked about in the offseason that felt really big. And then last week, you know, we didn't really get a look at him. There were some notes and you, you kind of start to back off and go, oh, this isn't great. But him being out there and seemingly wiping away some of that fear a week later is good news as well. OK, so I asked you kind of, hey, who were some of the standouts? Was there anything that you saw today out there that was kind of interesting to you or was one of those moments that, that gave you pause and, and gave you one big long, Hmm, you know, one of, one of those, what, what were some of those things you saw today? Uh, I think the thing that really kind of made me go, Hmm, that I, that I saw at practice, I'll give one on offense and one on defense. Uh, the one on offense is, and we kind of talked about this last week uh, after the open practice that it, it looks like jet motion will be incorporated on at K state's offense a lot more this year. And we saw more of the same uh, from the first practice to today where we saw some jet motion and jet sweeps. And we saw some, you come across like you're going to go with the jet uh, with the jet sweep and you cut across and you do like a little bubble screen off of it. Uh, The other thing is kind of how some of the defensive ends will be used. Uh, We saw a little bit of shuffling to a point where there was a couple plays where K-State had some defensive end or two defensive ends on one side of the field and then a nose guard on another. So just a few little wrinkles that look a little bit more new uh, scheme wise for K-State, which is exciting and you always see new things. And I I think that those both of those things are good things. And if you watch football and kind of how it's going across the country, you kind of see that unbalanced look on defense more and you see more and more jet motion on the offensive side. So I think it's more just kind of modernizing how K-State runs their schemes on both sides of the ball. Now you're on mute. It's fascinating to hear some of that because we saw so much of it last week and it's still kind of out there. And this, this offense is going to be Really fun to see how it develops over probably the first two games of the season, kind of setting up for that Arizona game where, I mean, Tulane will not be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination, road game, 11 o'clock, whatever, but you you should take care of the first two of UT Martin and Tulane, and then it gets, everything's building to that Arizona game where that will probably be the first time we get a real full look at what this K-State offense is going to be, but how we expect that game to look will be built on the first two. What are some of the different looks we immediately see against UT Martin? Like I'll ask you this question now, and this is probably one that that we'll have to talk about again when we're closer to kickoff, but how many plays into the season do you think K-State is before Avery Johnson has DJ Giddens on one hip and Dylan Edwards on the other? That is a really good question. And we kind of saw a little bit of the positional versatility uh, during the the practice today, where there was one there was one play in particular where Dylan Edwards was at running back, and I, it was Joe Jackson that was in the slot. So I, I could imagine that it that might not be something that you see against UT Martin, but that could be something that you see against Tulane, just to if if nothing else, to make Arizona have to like respect that and think that that could be a possibility. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. I some of the offensive stuff is going to be probably the most fun to keep track of this offseason and, and getting the looks like you did today uh, is really interesting. Any other notes or things you want to mention from practice today uh that have kind of developed in your head that you want people to know or be aware of? Uh the first things was we kind of got to see a little bit of the receiver rotation. Uh, the two plays that we, I would say that we saw the starting offense to start though, uh, they they played it a little close to the vest and it was a two tight end set, and and had two receivers instead of three a uh, three by one. Uh, so we got to see Keegan Johnson and Jace Brown on the field at the same time. Uh, another standout was Sterling Lockett. He was impressive in his time in the eleven on eleven stuff. Uh, we got to see a little bit of Trace Spivey and Andre Davis with the twos, and and I believe Trace Spivey also mixed in a little bit with the ones. 
Uh, Dante Cephas had a really nice catch. Uh, so I think that the offense is coming along uh, pretty nicely. And then defensively, uh, it, it, we didn't really get to see a lot of him at the practice during 11 on 11. And I didn't, I just didn't follow the linebackers uh, during the open practices. I was with some of the offense and then went to the secondary uh, in our time there. But you get the feeling that this has been probably the surprise of the camp is Terry Kirksey really coming around. And he looked, he looked more of the part at this practice, I think, than even last week. Or last week, I kind of saw he was a little bit on the lighter side this week. He looked a little bit more filled out. And I think that as kind of camp progresses, that that's the name that I feel like has been mentioned. Probably the most outside of Keegan Johnson has been Terry Kirksey. That's, that's really good news for K state because we knew at the top, the linebackers were, were set up really nice, but it's filling in depth behind them. And now it's, Hey, Marenko is looking healthy. Terry Kirksey's making this step where he can be used. And then, you know, DY had some news about Austin Romain, which I would encourage people to go check out over at K-State Online. So there's a lot of good happening for the K-State linebackers, and that's a good note on Terry Kirksey. So that will be how we leave it today. We'll have full coverage of some practice stuff. We'll have videos up over on the KSO YouTube page. Uh, here later on this evening, so make sure to check that out. But for now, we'll say goodbye. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. If you want more news and info on the Cats, head to On3, find kstateonline.com, and you'll be good to go. So we are out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.